Greetings from the land of OP! I am Rob the OP Gamer, and I am bringing you another Build Spotlight, where I cover not only how to, build, how to build a thing, but the entire setup surrounding the build from start to finish as well. Automation is key, and I like to show off my favorite ways of doing things. And don't forget to follow me on my channels on YouTube and Twitch at Rob the OP Gamer, where you can watch my videos and catch me live, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Rob the OP Gamer. So, let's get started. Today, I think that people would probably like to see what all these shiny things are behind me. Who wants to see what the shiny things are behind me? Raise your hand. Me. <laughs> so, anybody who's been keeping up so far with the new build spotlights I've been doing since my new channel switch over, uh, with the launch of the new channel, has probably been seeing me do the Steam Dynamos and the Magmatic Dynamos. And the entire time, they've probably also been seeing me run through my little back area here and have been seeing this behind me. And this, I've been saying I'll get to a little later on, and now is the time. Today, we are going to be covering the Compression Dynamo. Aw, yeah. And that's the one that we're get, that's going to run on fuel sources. So, oil, ethanol, that kind of thing. And the setup that we're going to be doing is an ethanol setup. So, you can probably see that we up here we've got some uh, fermenters going on. And we've got some tanks for transferring biofuel. And I've got some uh, refineries set up, as well as some stills. Uh, either one works, really, uh, for fermenting, or for, I'm sorry, for changing biofuel into ethanol. But uh, the difference is, is that the still works a little bit slower, but takes a little less power. Whereas the refinery from Buildcraft runs a little faster, but takes a little more power. So really, they both work. I just wanted to show them both off. And this is just my little setup back here for temporary sake. And we're going to be having them dumping into ender tanks. The ender tanks, I'll just pop that off there. You can see I've labeled so that they're black, orange, black. And we've got uh, liquid translocators on them. And that's how I'm going to be transferring the fluid between them. And it's just, translocators are really cool. I just wanted to put something else in here just for the sake of seeing something shiny. So uh, I'll show those off as well. And we're going to be using the tree farm outside that I set up for the steam boilers to have golden power sources from Darkcraft. Uh, that's using the logs. We're cooking up the logs for that. Anybody who saw the Steam Dynamo build probably saw that. Uh, but we're going to be using the saplings as well. So the logs are, gonna, are being cooked up for power sources. The saplings are going to get cooked, uh, or sorry, fermented for biofuel. So we're using this cart for two things at the same time, which is really nice. Nice and efficient that way. <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is set up the cart tree farm. And I covered this on the initial build that... Because when I first started recording this, I was going to do all four dynamos in one uh, one video. And that just turned out to be way too massive. Also, the video would have been too big. So, <laughs> so basically, I ended up splitting this up. So I'm going to cover this again just really quickly. I've got Applied Energistics managing the entire uh, the entire setup. I'm not going to actually show how to get into that too much. But I just, I'll just get down here really quick and show what we got. So there's three cart farms. Uh, each of the three cart farms has got um, a liquid manager, an ender tank, a cargo manager, and an external distributor. The cargo manager is the part that the, tr that the cart, when he goes around the track and mows these down, he puts everything, he dumps them off in the cargo manager. So right here, you can left click or right click to change these. And the ones that, you, that I'm concerned with, at least as far as this build is concerned, you can do all kinds of crazy things with this. This tells the cart what to do when he gets here. Uh, this is telling him to change part of the cart, currently storage slots. So when he gets here, and then you can change the arrow, left click the arrow to change which direction it's going. So this is telling him to dump off anything in his storage chest into the cargo manager. So you see it's pointing from him to the cargo manager, or from the chest to it. So going into the cargo manager. And this is to change part of the cart currently engine, so it goes out to the engine. So you can see he's dropping off his items now. You just saw him pull up just now right here. And then he takes anything he might need for his engine, which right now is nothing, because I just don't have that anything I'm doing right now. I might do that at some point, though, so I just tend to do it the same way every time. And then changes part of the cart's currently saplings, so if he needs any saplings for planting, he'll pick those up as well. He won't usually, because he'll fill that up automatically as he goes around the track and chops down trees. But in case he needs a few, he'll pick them, pick them up after dump, uh, dumping them off. And then I've got this side disabled, because I don't have anything I really want to do here. But you could, for example, if you're having him fertilize things, if he's got the fertilizer mod, you can have him pick up fertilizer too. If you had like a bone farm going on or something like that, so that he could keep fertilizer going, which would make the trees grow faster. He would try to grow them as he went. So that's how that works out. And this distributor, basically, or sorry, this manager has to be 
man this manager has to be pulled out into your system through this distributor the external distributor is what tells it where to send things and you can see down here it's set up so that the purple side is interacting with everything and what that means is you can set this up so if you click the, the uh, middle button there the cargo manager slot uh, it changes everything so it's got its own inventory so this chest now is only going to get things in here the saplings would only get things in here and anything from this uh, engine side would only go in here and basically you can change these colors too so what happens is the this side you can see it's got like a yellow block and it's got like a yellow block here as well for both the cargo manager uh, this side's blue this side's red and the liquid manager is the same way. So you got green on the opposite side. So what we're doing here is you can change these colors as well so that you can say, hey, um, only do the engine for the yellow side cart. So if there was a cart set up to come by this way, along this side, then it would do that. But he will ignore it because he comes by on the blue side. So that's why everything in here is currently set to the blue side. So we'll leave that alone. And then that's just the color side right here. And what I've got going on right here is I'm telling the distributor, hey, your purple side, which is the bottom, you can kind of see the ledge along here underneath of the precision port. Actually, I can wrench this so you can see better. So this is the purple side on the bottom. And then we wrench this so that he's facing upwards like that. And the purple side is saying, hey, all sections of the cart in there that we just showed off can be interacted through the purple side of our external distributor. And on the external distributor, I've just got a precision import bus on stack mode, so he just pulls everything out of it and sends it into the AE system in the base. There's a cable that runs along the ground that goes all the way back into the base over there. So that's how that's going to work out. And then the liquid manager is basically the same thing, except for it holds lava. And I've got a lava tank. I've got a neither pump and the neither coming in with lava, and I've shown that off in both the last two episodes, so go check those out if you want to see how I did that. But he's bringing lava in from the neither, and he is set to automatically output. So the red side on top, when you right click this button here, now he's not automatically outputting, now he is. So the red on top means he will automatically output lava to anything he's touching that can hold it. And in this case, he's touching a bunch of dirt on either side and the uh, liquid manager. So the liquid manager is the only thing that can hold it, so we just keep that covered up. And this is set to, I've disabled all three of these sides, so he's only able to interact with this one tank, but it will still fill them up. So you're still going to have a bunch of lava in here. But you can see now he's getting lava as he just went by there. The tracks themselves I've got set up as reinforced. Whoa, trigger on top of me. <laughs> the tracks themselves is reinforced track. This is from uh, Railcraft. The reinforced track, let me just get a piece of it so you can see how to make it. The reinforced track is really nice because anything on it moves 25% faster than normal. So it's not um gonna like do the high speed so the cart won't blow up around the corners but they'll move a little bit faster which is kind of nice i like it and they're explosion resistant so a creeper can blow up on them and nothing will be bad unless it blows up the dirt underneath and then you have to pick it up anyway but it won't destroy them and these are made out of six reinforced rail beds or six reinforced rails and one stone rail bed the stone rail bed is just going to be four stone ties get you one uh, get you one of these rail beds and the stone tie is just six stone slabs and a piece of rebar the stone slabs is just three stone, just straight across top, get you six of these, just like any plank recipe might be. The rebar is going to be three iron, or three bronze, uh, or three steel in the rolling machine. And that's a buildcraft machine, or it takes buildcraft power. And you get four from iron, four from... Or actually, you get six from iron. I'm not sure why this is listed in here twice. Uh, but you actually ignore this recipe right here. This one's not good. You get four four rebar pieces from bronze, and you get six from iron and eight from steel. And bronze is going to be just a combination. You smelt bronze dust by combining silver dust and three um, copper dust. So any any way that you're set up, set up to pulverize these things or macerate them or whatever, you can combine them into four bronze dust. Or if you have the uh, config enabled, you can just craft them straight. Which one is it? This one? No. That one? No. Well, I know that you can craft them straight out of just the bars themselves. You take one silver ingot, or I'm sorry, you take one tin ingot and three copper ingot, and you can do that. So that's in rail beds, and then the reinforced rails is going to be six steel and three obsidian dust or pulverized obsidian. So it's any kind of steel and any kind of obsidian dust 
in the rolling machine as well. That'll get you eight of them. And the really nice thing about this recipe is you might be saying, oh, that's going to take a bunch of power, and that's going to take a bunch of uh, different sorts of resources, and it's going to be very crafting recipe intensive. And yeah, that's true. But the nice drawback is, if you, if, you just, if you watch that just now, what did that recipe not involve? Creosote. There was no creosote oil involved in that at all. The regular track, if we look up just the regular track, let's see, track, yep, there we go. A normal, just regular track, its wooden rail bed is going to involve four wooden ties, which is going to involve a bucket of, of creosote along with the planks to make one of those ties. So you end up having to cook up a bunch of uh, coal into coke coal, or cook up a bunch of uh, logs into charcoal, and you only get like two and a half, uh, you only get like a quarter of a bucket or a half a bucket, depending on the recipe you use, creosote. So anybody that's messed with creosote a lot in the past knows that's a pain in the ass. So unless you want to wait 90 years for creosote to cook, go this route. I probably will from now on because I hate dealing with creosote because creosote, as far as I know, is only really useful for making regular tracks, which if you find a abandoned mine shaft, you can just pick up a bunch of them anyway. If you're just exploring, you start out your world, you're digging around, trying to get some resources, just snatch up those tracks. And then you don't have to make any tracks whatsoever, not even these ones. But um, if you're just building tracks, you definitely want to go with the... Whichever you'd like least, you're going to want to avoid. So I avoid the ones that require the creosote, because I hate dealing with creosote stuff. Um, anybody that's seen any of my videos probably knows Xavier. He loves doing creosote with creosote, so he avoids these tracks usually. <laughs> uh, you're also going to need one advanced detector rail in front of both the liquid manager and the cargo manager. The advanced detector rail is what tells the cart as he's circling, hey, stop here for a second and do something and then he'll interact with these. The advanced detector rail is just six iron, two stone pressure plates, and a redstone in the center. That's it. That'll get you two of these guys. So the pressure plate, of course, is two stone. That's it. So that's not expensive at all. Just a little bit of iron, and you're golden on those. The cart himself is a little bit expensive because you have to come up with all the pieces to make the cart, and the pieces are going to be in a, a reinforced hull. The one that I use for these guys anyway is a reinforced hull, Thermal engine, solar engine, coal engine. And as you can see, he's got these in here going on. Thermal engine, solar engine, coal engine. I've got the coal engine disabled. He'll run off of like pretty much whatever wood he's picking up as well. Because uh, right now I'm just having him run off of the solar uh, solar power at high priority and the thermal engine at medium. Oh, shit. He had to move right that second out of my range as I was trying to click on something. <laughs> Let me get up there to him again. Come here. So, if you left-click or right-click these, you can change their priority. So right now, you've got high priority on the solar engine and medium on the thermal. The thermal runs off the lava, which is why he's stopping by the liquid thing over there. So, if he doesn't have sunlight, if it's nighttime out, or if he's stuck under tree branches, he will instead run off of the lava fuel, is the whole idea there. So it's if you don't have solar power, instead, medium priority, run off the lava. And they're all three set up like that. So that's, uh, that's the engines on those guys. And then I've also got it set up with a Galgadorian woodcutter, which is the unbreakable one. He's got an internal tank to hold some lava, because he doesn't need a lot. He's not going very far, just around this track in circles. And uh, a side chest and two internal storage units to bring back stuff with, like when he chops down the trees. And he's got the tree exotic uh, module, which allows him to chop down the dark craft trees. Because otherwise, he would only be able to chop down vanilla trees. If you want your Steve's cart to chop down trees that aren't vanilla trees, it doesn't matter if it's any sort of other mod tree. If it comes from only forestry, for example, if you're doing like forestry tree farms, uh, you have to use the exotic thing. He only knows how to do vanilla trees unless you use that. And so those parts are pretty, most of them are pretty easy to make. The Galgadorian woodcutter is really expensive, but it can't be broken. If actually, let me just look up woodcutter. So there's three of them. There's the, uh, Hardened one, the Galgadorian one, and the basic one. The basic one is made out of diamond saw blades, a woodcutting core, and an iron ingot. The woodcutting core is an advanced PCB and eight of any kind of sapling in the game that you can find, really, or most of any kind. I'm not sure if every single one works, but most of the different saplings will work. The advanced PCB is three iron, four redstone, and two PCB, like this. The simple PCB is just four iron in the corners, four redstones in the sides, and gold in the center, or the redstone in the corners. Either way works. 
So that's the woodcutting core. The diamond saw blades is going to be one diamond and two iron. And that's it. That gets you one of those saw blades. And you need five of those to make the basic core. And you can see right here, it says basic woodcutting core, modular cost 34, durability 100%, uh, type tool, Steve's car 2. So basically, he can chop down trees with this, uh, but it takes durability damage as he uses the, the basic woodcutter. So as they're running around the trap and their trees, eventually that thing will get damaged and eventually destroyed. You won't lose it completely. You don't have to make a new one. Uh, it'll just empty out its little uh, durability thing. It will say this tool is at zero durability, and the cart will just circle the track forever and do nothing. The trees will grow, and he'll just circle forever. And you'll know when that happens because you'll see your trees are being chopped down. And then all you do is the woodcutter right here, you see this says will never break. If it was the diamond one or the hardened one, you could just take a new diamond or a new piece of shiny metal and drop it in this slot right here and it would repair itself. That's all you got to do to repair it. But it's something that's manual and I don't like manual. That's the whole point of the build spotlights, guys, right? Don't click as much as possible. <laughs> so the hardened one is going to be made out of either a diamond and a woodcutting core and three hardened saw blades, which is a shiny metal and two iron. The shiny metal is all kinds of crazy to make. You smelt a stabilized metal, which is, you get five of those guys out of three refined hardeners, a hardened mesh, and uh, five iron. The hardened mesh is four more of those hardeners, and five, di uh, five iron bars. The iron bars are just three iron on top and three in the middle, so six total iron gets you 16 of them. And the re refined hardener is going to be smelted out of a raw hardener, which is made out of a diamond and four obsidian gets you two of those guys. So it's like a crazy crafting recipe, five of them basically, which is one hardened saw blade uh, recipe. And that's how you make one straight up out of a woodcutting core. You can also upgrade a basic woodcutting core that's made out of the uh, diamond saw blades by just taking just five of those refined metals. Don't make saw blades out of them, just take five of the refined metals themselves. So one iron instead of a diamond and the diamond core, you can upgrade it that way. The only drawback to doing this, though, is this recipe right here involves one diamond and then the hardened saw blades, whereas this still also requires the reinforced metal because you can see you need one for each of the saw blades anyway. So it's the same in terms of cost for the reinforced metal, but you're also taking five diamonds from the five saw blades from the original core. So it's five diamonds opposed to one diamond in the center of this core. So I recommend if you're going to go with a hardened core, definitely build it straight out of the woodcutting core and the, and the hardened saw blades as opposed to upgrading the old core because the old one you've already spent five diamonds on, then you have to spend another one. So definitely do that. I would recommend anyway. Or do the OP way like I do and just wait to make a street cart until you get into the, into the neither because the Galgadorian core, again, you can upgrade your old hardened core or you can just make it straight up out of the regular core, which I, again, recommend doing. Otherwise, you're spending five extra metal, refined metal, just like you'd spend five extra diamond in the other upgrade recipe. And you're going to need five of these Galgadorian metals for saw blades. It's the same saw blade recipe. And then you're going to need one reinforced metal and the void cutting core. The, Galgador the Galgadorian metal is, like, really nuts. You smelt a lump of Galgador into a Galgadorian metal. You get two lumps of Galgador with this nutty-ass recipe right here. This is so much insane insanity right here. So you got three glowstone, three eyes of Galgador, two stabilized metal, which we already covered, and a diamond block, which is nine diamonds, obviously. The eye of Galgador is going to evolve a ton of crazy-ass random stuff right here, as you can see. It's going to involve the four magma cream in the corners. And you're going to need two gas tiers in the sides, two fermented spider eyes in the top and bottom, and an eye of ender in the center. The eye of ender is an ender pearl and a blaze powder, which has gotten out of macerating or crafting a blaze rod, which is dropped off blazes. And then the uh, gas tiers drop off the gas, the magma creams drop off the e magma cubes, and the fermented spider eyes are made out of one spider eye, one mushroom, and one sugar. Get you a fermented spider eye. So that's kind of a nutty-ass recipe. People don't like to do this because it involves tons of monster drops, but if you make monster farms anyway, which I tend to do, there you go. Not that hard to do if you're killing stuff anyway, and aside from that, the recipe is just some glowstone, which is easy to get, and the stabilized metal and the diamond block are going to be the only really huge, expensive pieces to it. But it's a nutty-ass recipe and takes a lot to get going, and that's what I have in here, and that's because they don't break, so I never have to touch these again. Just ch chunk load the area and leave. 
is all there is to this. Really, that's it. So, <laughs> so that's why I do that. And the uh, Applied Energistics has the cable that runs everything that the wood that the tree carts drop in there. So that's the wood cutting core. What else did I have on this cart? Uh, the reinforced hull. If you look this up, the reinforced hull is going to be five of those shiny metal ingots that we just talked about, or reinforced metals rather, which we've already covered with the stabilized metal. You need five of those guys for the hull itself, and four more per wheel, reinforced wheels. I'm sorry, one more per wheel. So a total of seven of these, and they're surrounded by iron to make the wheels. And that gets you the hull, which is what everything gets modded into. If you don't, if you're not using the Galgadorian woodcutter, if you want to instead use a basic woodcutting core or a hardened woodcutting core, you can instead use a standard hull, which is just iron instead of the stabilized stuff, the hardened metals we were just talking about, which is this one's just sticking uh, four sticks and an iron ingot. And this will cover you for most things. The only thing that doesn't fit in a reinforced hull, because of the modular costs for these things, is going to be the Galgadorian woodcutter. Everything else would fit in just a regular hull, just fine. So if you don't want to use a Galgadorian cutter, you don't mind repairing your tool every now and again, then you can just go with a standard hull. The engines are going to be... Uh, the thermal engine is going to be three neither brick, two obsidian, and a furnace, which is just eight cobblestone above two pistons like so. The pistons, of course, are going to be your iron in the center, redstone in the bottom, four cobblestone, and three wood planks across the top. That gets you one of the thermal engines, so you can run off the lava power. The coal engine... Coal engine's going to be... Where? There we go. Coal engine's going to be five iron, another furnace in the center, and two more pistons, so that's pretty cheap. The basic solar engine is going to be four uh, solar panels, which is made out of two glowstone, a redstone, and an iron ingot. You need four of those. Two pistons as before, two irons, and another one of those advanced PCBs that we talked about a few minutes ago. That'll get you a solar engine. So the engines aren't hard to make. The uh, internal tank. I'm just going to type in internal because that will show us the internal storage units as well. The internal tank is going to be tank panes around a tank valve. The tank is going to be just, as we checked out earlier, we'll get you eight of those. And the tank panes themselves is going to be seven glass panes with two regular glass on in the sides. The glass panes, you get 16 of them for six glass, just like the bars. The internal storage is going to be made out of eight chest panes around a chest lock. So it's just the same as the internal tank, but it's going to be wood instead of glass, basically. So the uh, chest lock is one iron ingot and one stone gets you eight of those. And then the chest panes are made out of two wood planks, I'm sorry, two wood logs of, of any kind on the left side and the right side, and then seven wood planks of any kind in the center. They get you 32 of those, just like... The tank paint recipe gets you 32 tanks. So it's not hard to make. And then I used side chests for the actual main storage. So if we look one of those guys up, he's going to be four huge chest panes in the corners and two large chest panes on the left side and right side. And then you're going to have your uh, regular chest pane in the top and bottom that we just covered. The huge and large ones are just four of the regular chest panes or nine of the regular chest panes, respectively. We'll get you those. So then we'll have the side chests. And then the last thing that I didn't cover was the tree, exotic tree piece. I'm going to get off the top of that thing there so I don't get grown on by a tree again. The exotic tree piece is going to be two redstone, two glowstone, an oak sapling, and two simple PCBs. And these are we covered already. And then one empty disc, which is just a redstone and a regular PCB. Simple PCB. So that's not expensive at all. And then what you do is you make a cart assembler. Which right here. This is going to be just two more simple PCBs, four stone, and uh, three iron ingots. 
we'll get you one of these guys for the cart assembler. And what you do is you take all those pieces we just covered on how to make this guy, this huge list of stuff right here, you just take everything you built, and you throw it inside a cart assembler, and you fuel it with coal, and it will make this cart for you. So that's how to do that. It's quite the setup. It takes a long time to get going, but once you do, you never have to touch it again. And we all know that's how I roll. I'll click forever so I don't have to click as much as possible. <laughs> so once we get the, car the tree farms running, we've got saplings for the ethanol. Uh, we also need fertilizer for the fermenter, which is where these cows right here come in. I also have up here is a sound muffler from Open Blocks. And the reason why I got one of these guys is because the sound muffler which is made out of just one note block surrounded by eight of any color of wool. The note block is one redstone, uh, any sort of planks, wood planks. The cows are very quiet. Muffles are sound. Sweet. You can bury this underneath of them if you want to, or keep it floating above, place it on the side, wherever you want to. The sound muffler, as you can see, it's got the little circle with the line through the note. No notes! Uh, it doesn't completely mute everything, but it will muffle most sound that's around. Uh, and they work, I think, within an 8 block radius. I believe that's, maybe it's 16. It's either 8 or 16 block radius, and it muffles sound. So, so the cow noises? Fuck that. We don't want cows moving in our ears. <laughs> uh, I've got, basically, they're sitting in a pen. I'm never touching these guys. I'm not breeding them. I'm not trying to make them, you know eat any sort of food, I'm not doing anything with these guys, all they're doing is just existing here, and they're existing on a floor of sewers. Sewers are a mine factory loaded item, and they're made by getting three plastic mm -hmm. sheets, four bricks, one bucket, and a factory machine block, which is made out of three stone and three plastic sheets, gets you three of them, and this recipe gets you four sewers out of one of those. The bucket, of course, is three iron ingots. And the bricks, you just smelt clay, which you mine out of riverbeds or ocean floors. The plastic sheets are made out of four raw plastic. The raw plastic is made out of smelting a rubber bar or an Industrial Craft 2 rubber, if you have the cross compatibility going on. Rubber bar is made by smelting a raw rubber. Raw rubber is a world gen item. If you look around... <clears throat> I wonder if I have any nearby. I don't think I do... Well, I can grow one really quick. Let's just grow one. Mine Factory Reloaded adds a rubber tree of its own, which is separate from the uh, factory or industrial craft rubber tree. It's separate. So what you're going to do, let me grab a piece of bone meal so I can grow this guy really quick. Doink. So as you're running around through normal world gen, you'll see these bright green leaves right here and this sort of different textured trunk. So this trunk is very, very different textured from normal trees, or, or uh, even from uh, forestry trees. It's a different kind of wood. Different, different textured wood. Different, different grained wood. It's, it's different veined wood. It, it, wood. So juvenile. <laughs> anyway, but the, the way you're probably going to recognize it right off is these bright green leaves. These bright green leaves are very distingu distinctive and nothing else really has the same sort of coloring, so they're really easy to spot. And basically, anytime you chop down one of these tree logs, you get a, a rubber tree log and a raw rubber at the same time. So you get it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you chop this, you get one rubber log, one rubber raw rubber, and so you get like you know four or five out of each tree basically. So they're not that hard to get, and you can make a rubber tree farm as well with this exact same setup. So I'm gonna say that you want rubber for other stuff because it's cross compatible with industrial craft because your server admin was so nice and did that for you. You could do like maybe two force logs and one rubber tree. That's what I usually do, actually. So that's how you get the sewers. And basically what the sewers do is all the sewers do for Mine Factory Reloaded is as the cows mill about on the sewers, they shit. Because they're cows. And if I get down here, you'll see I've got some thermal expansion fluid ducts down here. And up in the top where it says fluid duct from Wayla, it'll say it's full of sewage. <laughs> so basically the cows shit. The sewers collect the shit. And uh, it drops them automatically into the lines. You don't have to modify these at all. Doesn't need a redstone signal. Doesn't need upgrade with servo. Nothing. They'll just inst instantly drop down in here as they mill about on there, and you collect sewage. And I'm having them putting this into this ender tank here, 
This ender tank is just black, brown, black. Because brown for shit. If you haven't noticed yet, I tend to like to use the black X black colors. So I'm just going to cover this up really quick because there's no need to have it out. And so that's how I'm collecting shit. Uh, if we go inside the base, that's all. We're done out here. That's all we need. Everything else is going to be done inside the base. And inside the base over here, you can see that I've got the shit tank up above. This is a machine called a composter. I'll look that up really quick. The composter is made out of two pistons, a furnace, and a factory machine block. We've covered all these already in the build spotlight. And the, and the three raw plastic gets you a composter. And all it does is it takes an input of sewage, which we're getting from the cows outside. You just right click this so it automatically outputs down. <clears throat> and it will fill this with sewage. And it needs power, bringing power in through this tesseract from the base's main power. And, which is set up over there on our steam engine line that we've already done. And it's taking in sewage, it's taking in power, and it's doing its work. So every time it does a work, work cycle, which is 100 work ticks, which I think this is just one second, uh, maybe it's a couple, I don't know exactly what the math on this is. It's not quite one work cycle per tick. Yeah, it is. So this takes about five seconds, I think. And it's not idle at all because it's not getting a redstone signal. You could turn this off if we got a lever or any sort of redstone signal. So now it's idling and it's not doing its work cycling because you've got it switched off at the moment. But we don't want it off, we just want it to run all the time. And what it's doing is it's outputting fertilizer. See this industrial fertilizer in this chest right here? So what it does is it's making this fertilizer, it's taking the, sh it's taking the sewage, it's bringing in sh and it's composting it into this fertilizer. This industrial fertilizer is mine factory loaded fertilizer and can be used in some of its machines, but it has a shapeless crafting recipe, which might you for usage, it has a shapeless crafting recipe where it can be turned into, where is it? Oh, come on. There we go. Yes. Ah, uh, don't do this to me. There we go. Shapeless crafting recipe, you can just turn it into regular build craft, I'm sorry, fertilizer from forestry. So you can just craft it straight into regular forestry fertilizer. So that's what we're using in our fermenters because we're keeping these supplied with both saplings and fertilizer. And what I have going on here is I've got a recipe in here from the AE system saying, hey, one fertilizer makes industrial fertilizer <clears throat> or one regular fertilizer made from industrial fertilizer. All right? So that's the AE system so managing that for us. And then up here, on top of these guys, I've got a precision export bus saying keep this stocked with four saplings and fertilizer. And it says, it says uh, move single items and craft them. So it knows that in order to get fertilizer, it has to craft them first. And this knows how to do that. And I've got this coming in with a import bus. This is bringing these in a stack at a time. And I've got them being stored over here somewhere. Oh, there we go. So they're being stored here. So actually, I'm suddenly not sure why this isn't. Why is this filling up? It's supposed to be getting stored in those barrels over there. Yep, storage. Partition. The storage bus should be storing those up there. Hello? It's got some in there already. Import bus. Should be dragging those out of that chest there. Give me one second to figure this out, guys. Hang on. All right, guys, we're back. Just had a weird cable derp. That's all. As you can see the chest is now empty, and this furnace is running, and then we've got our uh, storage unit filling up here. So this is a 1642 now. So we, have, we just had a really strange cable derp. That's it. So everything should be good now. So basically that's what's happening up here is we're keeping the four saplings and the fertilizer stock in here based off of our farms. So now all we need to do is switch these guys on. I've got a nice lever set up here already. I've preloaded these guys up so that all the uh, water, there's a, um, there is a aqueous accumulator set up back there. That was weird. 
The aqueous accumulator is a thermal expansion machine that creates water from nothing. It's basically like an infinite water source. And I don't mean nothing as in nothing. I mean nothing as in, yes, you have to put water next. I'll just demonstrate that really quick because that's what's back there giving us water. Because fermenters, in addition to needing for, needing saplings and fertilizer, it also needs water. So that's, you can see the water pipe coming in from above up there. And basically all you do for that is, I'll just set this guy right here really quick, and we'll just put water down on either side of him. And you can see that he just makes it water forever. See the water filling up? And he can automatically output it based on his configuration like any thermal expansion machine. So I've got some of those up there, basically is what's happening there. So I'll just pop that out of there. Because as everybody knows, two water sources next to each other makes water infinitely forever. The aqueous, which I can never spell correctly, is made out of a machine frame, a bucket, a pneumatic servo, two of any kind of glass, and two tin ingots. The machine frame is going to be one gold ingot, four iron in the corners, or four steel, and four of any kind of glass get you the machine frame. And the servo is going to be two iron ingots, a rest on the center, and two of any kind of glass get you the pneumatic servo. So that's how to make one of those. It's not that expensive. Just It's basically free water forever. Uh, so we got one of those set up up there, filling these with water. And then I've got these tanks. This is just tank is just for a buffer. So basically these translocators, liquid translocators, are going to pull out the biofuel, or the biomass, rather. As the biomass is made, it'll pull them out and put them in this tank. And then these will pull out of the tank and put them into the stills and refineries. And we've got more that's going to be pulling out the biomass, or pulling out the ethanol, and putting them in the ender tanks, which the ender tank is what we're going to be used to fueling other stuff. So when we want to move ethanol around, we just take an ender tank that's, that's coded the same way. And you don't have to use these translocators. I just did it for a, a cool little nifty particle effect. Uh, I just thought they looked really awesome, and they move things really fast. And so I'm just going to use those in order to move the liquid. You could use liquid pipes, you could use fluid ducts, you could use whatever you want to use. Uh, you don't even have to use these or the tanks. If you want to just put a pipe straight from the fermenter straight to the still or refinery, you could do that and skip this whole center buffer altogether. However you want to do it's fine. The only reason you have to have a center buffer here is because the translocators can only move moved in the same block. They only move it through a one block space. So if I put two tanks down here right like that, the uh, locator, what you do is you put liquid in one like so. And then what you do is you can see that over here I've got this one is kind of got like an indented piece and this one's got a piece that sticks out a little bit. <laughs> and one likes the other. <laughs> so basically what you do is you right click to change it. So if I right click right here in the center bit it becomes the receiving end and it moves the water. So it's actually really quick. It moves the water from one thing to the other really fast and it's got a cool little particle effect going on. And then if I change them like this, it'll move it back. So they can be the receiver or the sender either way. So just a pretty quick little way to do things. That's the liquid version of it. There's also an item transport mode. So if I took a chest like this and I put a chest right there, and I've, I took the item translocator, we'll put one on that side. I have to hold, make sure to hold shift to do that. And then if I put cobblestone, like we'll put a stack of cobblestone in here really quick. And then if I right-click this, <laughs> now the cobblestone's over here, and it's not in this chest anymore. And then we can reverse those. <laughs> ah, that's pretty good. And my inventory got sorted, which annoys the piss out of me. Damn it. Oh well. So that's how those work. The item translocator is made out of an ender pearl, four redstone, two iron ingots, a gold, and a piston in the center. Get you two of them. And the liquid one is the exact same recipe, except that a gold in the bottom. Use lapis. You get two of them per recipe. And it's just a translocator mod. And, and so that's what we're going to do here. And all I'm going to do is flip this lever on, which I've got set up to turn all these on. And that will send power to everything. So these will turn on. And everything should be golden now. The only drawback to this is there's a lot of lag with this. There's a little bit of latency that's happening now. Um, but it's all only because I got the particles on high to show this off a little bit. Normally I don't do that. 
But you can see that it's pulling the ferment, the uh, biofuel out, which you can see the green stream coming out this way. The green stream comes into the glass tanks, which is from, oh, this is an open block tank. I should probably show that off. Uh, five glass panes and four obsidian in the corners to get you two of these. And then it moves them directly down here. You can see the fermenters filling up. This fermenter already has one side all the way full. The stills are, should already be full as well. So you can see that they're full, so they're not moving any out. Now the tank is starting to fill up. So now we have an excess in the buffer over here. Once these guys fill up as well, the buffer will start to build on this side as well. But you can see that while it has nothing to move, because these are currently cooking up the ethanol, the biomass into ethanol, while it's currently cooking these up, it doesn't have anywhere to move them, so it just stops operating. So they're self-managed. They won't just operate forever and spill things all over the place. And you can see the orange streamers coming out as they get done. And you can sort of see the difference too, like over here, as it's as it's emptying out, you can see that it's like a solid curly cue. Like you see the solid green curly cue coming down from above. Uh, the same thing down here, it's kind of a solid green curly cue. This one is not quite solid. The ethanol is kind of broken up a little bit. It's like a broken up curly cue a bit. And then over here, it's even worse. It's like a little split, 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 split. That's because as I said before, the fermenters supply the biomass and the stills and refineries can both operate them but the refinery operates faster but takes a lot more power so really um, it's more energy efficient to use the stills but it's more speed efficient to use the refineries and it mostly equals out what I have found is that if you're trying to do things if you if you're burning up stuff really fast if you're using all this ethanol as fast as you're getting it you want to go with the refineries that's generally what I tend to say so there's that the fermenters let's look up the items that we've made here fermenters and stills are both from uh, build we're both from forestry sorry uh, the fermenter is going to be sturdy casing which is eight bronze what the hell that's an IC2 recipe you can do that if you have bronze item casing laying around but just take eight bronze of any kind get you the sturdy casing and then yeah four bronze gears I guess there's a tinkers tinkers alloy tinkers construct version but uh, oh, that's thermal expansion there's several different types of bronze gears basically you get uh, four bronze gears which is made out of four bronze around a stone gear and four glass will get you your fermenter which is the guys we got up here that we're keeping stocked with this stuff through the AE system. Oh, there we go. This buffer is almost full. This buffer is just starting to fill up because these guys are now full. The under tanks are now full. I'm going to cover this floor back up, by the way. Just wanted to see, have you guys see that those are filling up there. So these are both off now. And uh, that's off now. And once these guys fill up completely, those will turn off as well. And then once the buffer's full, you can see this buffer's already full, so those guys turned off as well. And now he's just filling up his own internal tank. Once he fills up his internal tank, he'll shut off also. So the kind of cool thing about this is it's a mostly self-managed system. You don't have to come back here and mess with this all the time. Unless you want to just turn it off. Click. The still, which is the forestry side that takes less power but operates less quickly, is going to be the same sort of recipe, except for instead of bronze gears, you're going to use redstone in the corners. And that's these guys over here. And then the refinery is going to be from Buildcraft, normally used for refining oil into fuel. You can also use it in this fashion. Uh, it's going to be a diamond gear, which is the gold gear surrounded by four diamonds, which is a stone gear, uh, four gears, gold gear, which is a iron gear surrounded by four gold, which is a stone gear surrounded by four iron. So it's the same sort of gear recipe. You need a stone gear three tanks which is a circle of glass and two redstone torches which is a redstone and a stick and apparently I saw the glitch of the helmet looking like a stick but a stick looking like a helmet oh well that'll get fixed eventually so you can see now these guys are totally full on ethanol and they're filling up on or they're totally full on biomass and now their front tank is filling up with ethanol and they told four buckets apiece so once it's made up four buckets of ethanol it'll stop taking in the biomass but you can see that it's it's definitely creating a buffer there. So that's a really cool system. I like this a lot. 
Um, and of course you can expand this to like a whole giant wall if you want to. This is just a simple little setup to show you guys how to do this. Um, one, I think, one fermenter I think can support two, two stills, I want to say. I think, um, in the past I've been able to support two at all times. Sometimes it can almost support three if it's not in heavy operation. Uh, but generally a one to two ratio is good for these, is what I tend to say. And it's generally like a one to one or even a two to one for the refineries because they operate so much quicker. Generally. Although I think that's a little skewed. Maybe a one to one. I would go with a one to one personally, or maybe it's a one maybe it's a two to three. Maybe it's just like this. Think think two to three should be fine. But it's a one to two over here. But I set this up in a split fashion like this just so you guys can see the uh, stills versus the refineries. Because that would be kind of cool. So now we're getting ethanol. Now what do we do? Well, the ethanol is going to be used for our compression dynamos. We're finally getting to it. Ha, man. We're finally getting to actually showing off the dynamos, which is what we've been trying to do the whole time. Give me one second to move some stuff around my inventory again. Because I don't know why things moved. God, I hate when that happens. I'm very picky about my inventory. I like to keep things a certain fashion. And so I'm probably changing things around wrong completely anyway. Uh, actually, that's fine. I think we'll keep that there. We'll put this in the corner. Yeah. So, the compression dynamo. We're finally getting the dynamo piece, which is the power source for thermal expansion. Uh, we've covered the other two dynamos in previous videos. If you haven't seen those, go check them out. The magmatic dynamo and the steam dynamo. The compression dynamo is the uh, tin-based one. So you're going to take your redstone transmission coil, which is a silver ingot and two redstone, and you're going to have your three tin ingots over the top of redstone and two tin gears, which is going to be your stone gear surrounded by tin, just like any other gear recipe. That's going to get you your compression dynamo. And I have made a little area downstairs. You can see this is an elevator block. I showed this off last episode as well. So we're going to hold shift, or sneak rather, and down here we go. What are you doing? Why are you not running? That's a little strange. Oh well. <laughs> Maybe if I replace them. We did the magmatic dynamos last episode. There he goes. It's probably redstone derp, actually. So that's that. And then, uh, so that's that wall for this one. I think we'll do the, uh, we'll do the compression ones down here. And I'm going to basically make a same sort of setup over there as I did over here. So basically, I'm not going to bother with the lever this time, though. Before, in the last episode for the magnetic dynamos, I showed how to make a lever. we got a cable running back there to switch all those on. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm instead going to... Actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn these guys... Yeah, we'll leave them on, whatever. It's just lava. So I'm not going to do that this time, because they will self-manage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a energy cell and I'm going to pick a resonant energy cell as a matter of fact we can switch this one as well because we did the redstone one last time we can just replace that guy he'll build up power so we are going to go with let's see one two three so I'm gonna come over here we're gonna go one two three pop him right there and then I'm gonna get my redstone co co reception coil or conduit sorry redstone conduit the resonant cell is going to be oh come on it's going to be four resonant or it's going to be four enderium ingate redstone energy cell which we covered last episode anyway but I'll show it again really quick you take you need eight total electrum because you need four for the empty frame four electrum ingots one diamond and four hardened glass these are all made the hardened glass and the electrum ingots are both made in the thermal expansion machine the induction smelter. You take a silver and a uh, oh come on, a silver and a gold. What's this? Sand and two electron blend. Weird. Oh, you get slag that way. Okay. Or two pulverized silver or silver dust and two pul or pulverized silver gold. Oh my God. One gold dust or pulverized gold. 
uh, and one silver dust or pulverized silver and get you two of them. Or you can just use the ingots themselves, as you can see here. And that's any kind of silver, we'll get you two of those guys. And that's the induction smelter needs power. And the hardened glass is going to be the same in the induction smelter, except for you need one lead ingot and eight pulverized obsidian or obsidian dust. And I showed that in a little more detail in the last episode. You can go check that out if you'd like. Or maybe it was the episode before, one of the two. In one of the other Dynamo episodes, I covered the setup for those. So you need eight of those total ingots. Eight electrum ingots. Because you need to make the frame. You fill it with redstone. You got to get redstone, destabilized redstone, which you put into a magmatic crucible, which is also a thermal expansion machine that needs power. And you get 100 millibuckets per one redstone. And you put that in a magmatic, or the magma crucible, which then outputs into the fluid transposer, which is a second machine. And once you get 4,000 millibuckets or 40 redstone, you melt down 40 redstone, that will fill up the frame. Okay? And then you get the frame with three electrum ingot around it, an electric, electrum transmission coil, which is electrum and two redstone, just the one we saw a minute ago, and two lead will get you the redstone cell. And the difference is this guy holds 50 million RF, whereas the redstone cell holds 10 million RF. So there's that. And then the electrum ingot is going to be kind of complicated. you got to take the induction smelter with a pyrothium dust and two indirium blends get you two of those guys. The pyrothium dust is going to be a combination of a coal powder or pulverized coal, um, a sulfur dust or a salt piece of sulfur, a blaze powder, and a redstone. We'll get you two of those guys. It's a shapeless crafting recipe. The blaze powder, I recommend putting him through a pulverizer, which is the, uh, the other one of the other thermal expansion machines. If you pulverize, not only do you get four blaze powders, but you have a 50% chance of getting one of those sulfur anyway. So that's how I tend to get my sulfur when I'm setting this up. And then the ele electrum blend is going to take one shiny metal and four tin dust or pulverized tin and a bucket of resonant ender, which is going to be you melt down the ender pearl in the magma crucible to get them. 250 millibuckets per pearl, so you need four total pearls for one of these buckets. And that gets you four of these electrum blends, or four of these endarium blends, excuse me. The pulverized shiny metal uh, is going to be platinum greens. I have no idea where that comes from. Uh, if you have neither ores mod installed, which I do, you can find neither platinum ore, and that pulverizes into four of them. Uh, alternatively, if you pulverize iron, or no, sorry, ferrous ore, which is a world gen ore from thermal expansion, if you pulverize a ferrous, you have a 10% chance of getting a shiny metal out of it. So that's the other way to get it. So it's a little more complicated than the redstone cell, uh, but it holds so much more energy. I always make these guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many did we do over there? 2, 4, so, uh, we went to the whole, the whole length of the wall. All the way, baby! So I'm going to drop him in there. We're going to get our inner tank. I'm going to put him there. And this guy is black, orange, black that I used for the ethanol. So let me grab an orange dye really quick. Doink. Ethanol. And we're going to set up our compression dynamos. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We went all the way to the wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So really, you don't have to just use one wall. Basically, as fast as you can produce ethanol is as fast as you can keep got, uh, keep stuff in there. That's it. It really only de it don't really only depends on how much ethanol you can have at a time. So this is going to take two things. It needs it needs its fuel source, which we're using ethanol, and it needs water. It has to be cooled. This is a coolant type of setup, so it has to always be cooled down. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back here as well. Let's punch out some of this wall for a few minutes. Uh, give me a second. I'm going to dig out this wall. Probably nobody wants to see me dig out a wall, so give me one second and I'll be back. Alright guys, I'm back. All I did was I dug out this wall back here, and I took some fluid ducts, which I'm going to be used to be moving the water into the things. And the fluid ducts are pretty easy to make. It's just one of those hardened glass and two copper. Get you six of them. And that's a thermal expansion way of moving liquid. It's the fluid pipe, basically. So I dug out this wall behind these engines, 
and I set up an aqueous accumulator. This guy's going to automatically output to the top, and that's going to fill these guys up with water. Am I right above that? Yeah, I am. So I'm going to hook that up right there, and then I'm going to hook that up. So now we got water coming in. That's it. That's all I'm doing behind there so that these guys can get some water going on. So you can see that it's starting to fill up there. It's going to take it a few minutes for that water to fill up. I just did the aqueous accumulator like we did before. It doesn't look like it's going all that fast, and it's not. It's going to take it a good few minutes. But to be completely honest, that's all you really need. I mean, once they, once they fill up, then it'll take a lot less time to actually maintain. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to get this dug out up here because we need to get the piping up here. So we're going to use the same fluid ducts in order to get the ethanol in here. And I'm going to take my wrench. We're going to right-click that twice to disconnect right there. And the same thing here. And that should not connect. Oh, it done. Shit. <laughs> Alright, hang on. Let me change that around like a little bit. Alright, so I got the aqueous moved back one. So it was right here. So I backed that up one basically. So they wouldn't connect. And I'm just going to stick this in the wall so it's back a little bit farther. So I just moved the aqueous back. That'll take care of that. And then we should now be able to go ahead and run our, flu our fluid ducts for the ethanol along underneath. I think there's a way to make them not connect to each other, but I don't remember what it is. So if I recall at some point, maybe I'll put an annotation up or something like that. So now that we're filling up with water, all we're going to do next is right-click this and get the ethanol out. And bam! They just all turn on. Ha, man! Beautiful. And that is going to be your compression dynamo. You can see it's running an ADRFT. I've got these set to enable low, so they're not getting signals, so they're staying on. Once they fill up, they will run into a very much reduced fuel consumption usage like the other ones do. Because they will run forever, basically, without any sort of managing signal. But once they fill up their own internal buffer, then they will run into a reduced reduced mode. It's like it's in like idle mode, so it still consumes a little bit of fuel to keep them running, but it doesn't. it's not anywhere near as much. You can see that our power is filling up in our resonant energy cell. So it's receiving all its power, it's doing good, it is charging up. So times are good, and that, ladies and gentlemen, completes the compression dynamo build. Uh, you could use fuel if you'd rather use fuel, but this, this build sp setup, this build spotlight involved ethanol, so we are now all set to go. And that should be the setup, you can see the tank back there emptied out pretty quick, but the uh, biofuel production upstairs is going to increase, so it'll start going nuts. And it will keep up eventually. It will catch itself up a little later on. So that should be all set to go. And if you find that you're using too much ethanol, just put some more stills and everything up. If you're not using, if you're producing way too much power, just turn off a couple of these engines. Should be all set to go. And that has been the compression dynamo build, ladies and gentlemen. Next week is the last dynamo that we haven't covered yet, the reactant dynamo. And there's going to be some really awesome things planned for that. So here's your screenshot for this one. Take a picture. Keep your collection going. I have been Rob the OP Gamer, and don't forget to follow me on my channels on YouTube and Twitch at Rob the OP Gamer, where you can watch my videos and catch me live, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter, Twitter at Rob the OP Gamer. Hope to see you guys next time. Peace!